What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the 20 features that you must know coming to China using WeChat coming up. Now, as some of you may know, WeChat is the mega platform in China that can be used to make payments, order a taxi, buy plane tickets, buy movie tickets, etc. If you don't know how to use WeChat, you might as well walk around without a phone and wallet in China. Don't worry though, I posted all the timestamps in the description below and I'll also put them up here for your reference if you just want to get straight to it. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so here we are. If you don't have WeChat, you can just go to the Play Store and download WeChat and make sure you get the international version. If you don't have the international version, you can go to me, settings, general, language, and change it to English. So the first thing I'm going to walk you through is setting up an account. You select more options down here and then you just click on sign up. Just follow the instructions. You can use your home country's phone number, or your Chinese phone number, and then continue on. When you first log in, you're probably not going to have any chats, but it'll look something like this where you have four buttons at the bottom, chats, contacts, discover, and me. For changing your profile settings, you're going to click on me and just simply click on your name up there. And you'll see you can change your profile photo, your name, your WeChat ID if people ask, your QR code, and your What's Up slogan, which is like what people see, hello, when they look up your profile, they'll see like a little slogan that you can change. And if someone wants to add your WeChat and you don't know what your WeChat ID is or for some reason, you can also click on my QR code and they can scan your QR code to go ahead and add you. So the next two features are going to be adding contacts or editing contacts. So make sure you're in the chats option in the bottom left corner here. And then you're going to click this plus sign up here and you're going to click on add contacts. For add contacts, you can search their mobile number here or their WeChat ID and they should show up and then you can go ahead and click add. Once you've added somebody, you can look at their profile and if you want to change their name, like for example, they have a lot of Chinese names here that I don't remember. You can click on edit contact and change their name. So this is how it shows up on your contacts list. So if you need to search a contact, you can just say what's up and you'll know this person will be there. So right now I'm in my contacts. I search what's up and he shows up and then I can chat with him. Another thing to note, about your contacts is that you can look at their moments which is pretty much the same as Facebook feed so you can just click on their moments and see what they've posted in the last I guess they posted this yesterday another note about contacts is if you want to manage privacy settings you can click on privacy for a contact and you can select to hide my post so they can't see your post or hide their post so you can't see their post whenever they use their feed and their feed is known as moments as you can see right here so you click on a person's moments and it's pretty much like a Facebook feed where they can just post pictures and comments uh, whenever they want to. The next two features I'll be talking about are chatting and group chats. So if you want to start a chat or you've never started a chat before, you can click on new chat and you just have to select one of your contacts. Like I mentioned before, let's do the WhatsApp. I know it's like the first one, but just kind of like mention it and click OK and you can start chatting with that person, click send, good to go. If you want to create a new group, you can simply select new chat and select multiple people to join a group. Click OK. It'll create that group and then you can click on the three dots up here and you can add or subtract people. Um, you can also set up a group name so you can say hello for the group name. Group notice, so if you want to put like an announcement, like hey, you can't advertise in this group, blah, 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 blah. You can put anything on there. Manage group settings, so invitation approval is no one can add someone unless you give them authority to add somebody or you have to vet the person before they add it. You can mute notifications which is pretty much so if groups get kind of loud and they're talking all the time, you don't get a notification on your phone. And you can see the different other features that you can have um, the group settings for. 
There's also group QR code if you want to make like a special group QR code. But that's pretty much how you manage the settings of a group. And you can also, something that took me a while to learn is my alias in a group right here. If you click it, you can have it say, hello. And then your name, your name of the group will say Michael Hello. And that's how my name will show up just in that group. But my name is still like Michael at the end. So the next two features are voice messages, video or voice calls. So I'm going to talk to my wife here. If you just want to do a regular message, you can just send her a message like this, or you can select on the audio symbol on the left here. And you pretty much hold to talk and then you say like whatever you want to say. Note that there is a one minute limit or like 60 second limit to how long your voice message can be. Something I didn't know that took me forever to find out about voice messages is it automatically goes to your speaker. So if someone sends you a voice message, it's gonna like everyone and their mama is gonna know what the voice message says. But if you click on the voice message and then put it towards your ear as if you're taking a phone call, it transfers the voice message from the speaker to the speaker just for your ear so only you can hear the voice message. This took me forever to find out and I thought it was a cool feature that I just want to share with you guys. So if you want to enable a voice or video call, you just click on the plus sign here and you can see the two options, video or voice call. So think of like video calls like a real time video conference chat and voice calls just like a regular telephone call. The next two features I'm going to be showing you is how to sticky chats on the top and also scanning. So you can tell I have these two chats up top because there's like my family, my wife. So you can click on the person that you want to sticky. You click on the three buttons or the three dots in the top right corner. And then here you can see you can select to sticky them on top so that if it gets too crowded, you know, like all these groups I'm in, at least I know like the important ones I can always look at and view. The next one is scanning. Um, scanning can be used for many functions. It can be used to make payments, to add friends, to join groups, or to direct people to their official account. So you just click on the plus sign here and you can just scan whatever you want here. Usually there's a QR code if you wanna make a payment or you wanna add a friend. This is the scanning function, pretty easy. Okay, now that you know how to scan, the next feature I'm gonna talk about is extracting QR codes. This one also took me a while to find out and it's really handy because when you see a QR code, you can easily scan it. But if it's on your phone, like on an image, how do you scan that? So this is just like a random advertisement I saw as an example. You can actually press and hold the QR code if it looks like that or sometimes it looks circular. And then you can click on extract QR code. So you don't have to do what I did because I have two phones where I took a picture of the QR code on one phone and, and then scanned it with the other. You can just simply hold down the QR code and then extract the code and go on with your purchase or wherever it leads you or wherever you want to go and have a good day. Don't be like me. Use this function. It's really handy. Okay, the next feature I want to be talking about are translations. So let's say you don't know any word of Chinese, you can't read Chinese, but you don't want to know what someone sends you. So there's actually two ways to do this. The first one is if you're actually in a chat like I am right now, you can press and hold the text and then click on translate. And as long as you set the settings to English, like I showed you in the beginning, you can see their translation. The second way to do translations is to click the plus sign right here click on scan and then you can see there's a button here that says translate now what's cool about this is that you can take a picture of like something in chinese so if you have like a menu that's all in chinese you take a picture and it'll translate it or if you have a picture saved on your phone you can click on the picture icon here select the picture that will be in your storage that's all in chinese and it will translate it from chinese to english pretty convenient if you just want to chat with someone not talk to them and they can only speak chinese and you only speak english it works the other way around too, where if they only speak Chinese and no English and they have the Chinese version, they can translate English to Chinese. The next feature I'm going to go into is data transfers. So let's say you get a brand new phone and you want to transfer all the chats, all the contacts of your WeChat from your old phone to your new phone. You just click on me, settings, chats, backup and migrate chats, and then you can back up all the information to a computer or to another device. In this case, I'm gonna select another device. 
And here, both devices need to be on the same Wi-Fi network for it to work. And you can select what chat history, you can select all the chat history you want to save. Then just follow the instructions. But the idea is your original phone will have a QR code that needs to be scanned by your new phone when you log in to WeChat on your new phone and then it will migrate all the chats. Pretty convenient. So the next function I'm gonna show you is how to transfer files between your phone and your PC without having to log out of WeChat. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is to actually download the application for your Windows or your Apple's desktop for WeChat. Once you have that downloaded, then you can see right here, it says uh, login Michael. It already has my account information saved, but if not, I'll just ask you for account and password. Then you click on login. Then on your phone, you're gonna have this message that says confirm login for WeChat Windows. You click login if you wanna auto sync your messages that are on your phone. And then you can see on your computer, it has pretty much all the same things that I have on my phone mirrored onto my Windows desktop. So actually, I'm transferring the files of this video like live as uh, I finish each part and it's very convenient to use. So you can just simply select a file. Let's see, I wanna send this. Using the file transfer chat, which will show up once you open it. And then you can see, using the file transfer chat, this image was transferred successfully to my computer. And it works vice versa too. Like if I have like a PPT I want to send from my computer to my phone, just use the file transfer chat and it easily does it. So the next feature I'm gonna be showing you is probably one of the most important is the WeChat pay function. And there's actually two ways to activate this if you've never had it before. The first one is to have someone send you money, like a, either cash or a red packet, which can be done by adding the plus sign. And you can see you can send someone the red packet and transfer. So that can send an alert to your phone that you need to set up WeChat pay and then you follow the instructions. The second way is to go to me WeChat Pay, Wallet, Cards, and then you gotta add a bank card. Something to note is that to use this function for now, you must have a Chinese bank card. If you don't know how to get a Chinese bank card, you can refer to the video up here and I'll actually put it in the description below on how to get a Chinese bank card, no matter what kind of visa you have. So while you're setting the information for your cards, cause it's gonna say, hey, you need to verify your identity and all that. You need to have your passport with you. Be ready to do authentication real time. You may need to even take a picture of yourself, like a selfie for, so that they can verify your information. But once you have a Chinese bank card, you just simply put the Chinese bank card in. You verify your identity by putting your passport info in, maybe a selfie or a first picture of your passport, and then you have WeChat Pay set up. It may take 24 hours for the whole verification process or it may be instantaneous. So the next features we wanna talk about are the payment options and sending money. As I mentioned before, if you wanna send money, you just click the contact and you can select red packet or transfer. If you wanna change the payment options, go to me, WeChat Pay, on the top right corner of WeChat Pay, there's three dots. And here you can see if your information has been authenticated, like with your passport, as I mentioned, and the different types of ways you can pay. And some people may actually have the option to change your payment method to like fingerprint or face recognition, which will show up here if you would like to do that. Next feature is how to pay your phone bills. So there's a lot that can be done in uh, WeChat, as you can see. So you go to me, WeChat Pay, and on WeChat Pay, you can see different options that you can select. You're gonna select mobile top-up. Now for this, you need to enter your phone number in China for it to work, and you need to have a Chinese phone. And if you don't know how to get a Chinese phone, you can refer to the video up here in the card, or I'll put it in the description below on how to get a Chinese phone, and you can select how much you wanna top up. So in China, depending on your plan, you can have a top up as you go. So when it gives you a warning saying your data is almost done, you can top it up and it's very convenient. It actually takes like maybe minutes for you to get the amount topped up to your mobile account. Okay, I'm back on the WeChat pay menu and the next feature I'm gonna talk about is transportation mini programs. So like ride hailing or booking a flight or speed train. So if you scroll down, you can go on ride hailing, select ride hailing and this is provided by DD, so they work like a third party with WeChat that provides DD. 
you can go ahead and open it and order a taxi. Now, what I recommend is if you do use WeChat services like this, like hailing a taxi, it's most likely going to be in Chinese. But DD actually has an, an English version in their application, but you need to download their application to use it. So that's how you order a taxi. And if you want to book a flight, book a train ticket, you can just select this. Oh, it actually gave me the option to change it automatically to English. That's nice. I didn't do that last time. And then you can look at the different options on the flights that are available, trains, hotels, all that, all in one platform. You can continue on with your transaction. So again, like I mentioned, WeChat is like a mega platform in China that you just must get used to for a convenient life. Another thing that's really handy about WeChat that I'm gonna show you right now are mini program searches and favoriting. So you can see I'm in the main chat window here. If you scroll down like this, it will open up your mini programs that you use. So you can see I'm using like DMP and like I have the subway one there. I have many, many different mini programs you can use. If you want to search for a mini program, you just click on search mini programs. It's probably going to be in Chinese though. So it may not show up with the search you want, but C trip is like a booking agency for hotels, flights, and tickets. And you can see I already have it up here saved, but it shows the C trip and you can click on it and it will open up the mini program. And if you want to favor a mini program, as in like it always shows up here. So for example, like this subway one is very convenient because it produces a QR code that just makes me go through the subway no matter what line I'm in. And I want to save that on the top so I don't always have to look for the subway mini program. You simply click on the three dots here and it will show you all the mini programs, right? You press and hold the mini program you want to save and then you click on add a star. When you add a star, it will forever show on the mini programs when it says my mini programs down here. It's very convenient and easy to use. If you don't know how to shop online, so as you can see, there's JD here, there's Meituan. I've actually made a video of online shopping in China when it comes to booking tickets, buying like anything like an Amazon or booking food so that it's delivered straight to your door. And the last but not least feature I'm going to talk about are moments and favorites. So if you click on discover here and then go to moments, you can see all your friends moments, you know, similar to Facebook feed of what they post and anything like that. You can actually post yourself by clicking on the camera here. You have to have a picture or something. And then you can choose from the album or take a camera picture live and then write your little post and you can post it on your moments. Now let's say you like see an interesting article that you want to save or like a post that you want to save but you don't know how to save it. Well, you can save it to your favorite. So let's select this right here. You can hold, hold any picture down or hold any text down and you have the option to say to add to favorites. So let's say this article, I'm going to add it to my favorites. Once it says it's added, you can go back, click on me, click on favorites, and you'll see that it is saved right here for you to pull up whenever you need to. So there's still a lot more this platform has to offer, but I just want to share you the 20 most important ones from my experience living in China for almost two years. If you found some value from this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification to get videos every week about having a better lifestyle in China as a foreigner. Feel free to click the tap the screen right here to see more videos about having a better lifestyle as a foreigner in China. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one, and I hope you keep surviving.